Morning friends, Ben from Lions Warm Works. It's a beauty day here in the Rockies. Uh, really excited to get out here choring. Um, we just moved to a brand new home. Got a big old workshop and terribly excited because much of the worm production has been on pause for some time. And today I am finally gonna get to build my Verm Bin 96 that is gonna be a large flow through homemade style reactor. I ran a Verm Bin 48, the four foot model for several years loved it ended up selling it as we were getting close to you know moving from our home um, it was just not feasible to to move as is so i'm really excited to be able to be uh, sharing this build with you so uh let's cut the shuck and jive and get stuck into it so our first bit of fun is going to be cutting all this lumber down to length we are going to be making some sawdust today the cut length and materials list is all available in the verm bin guide that you can purchase from bentley i'll put a link somewhere for you so let's get at it Now's the part where we eat our Wheaties. <laughs> we gotta put a hole through both of these boards on each of these marks to accommodate the conduit. Uh, we're using three quarter inch conduit. Um, it doesn't require being tight or anything like that. It's just a spacing thing. So I'm gonna start with the Forstner bit. Um, you can also use a spade bit. I'll kind of see which one goes more quickly. Um, but this is one of the parts where you just gotta eat your Wheaties and drill a bunch of deep holes. Found the corded drill. That only took 20 minutes. Oofta, that was a bit of a production. <laughs> but we've got all these holes drilled out. Don't worry too much if you're getting tear through. The ends of these are going to be covered by the plywood when we build the box. That was a fair bit of work, but surely that's the worst of it, right? Well, maybe not. This is 90 feet of three quarter inch conduit. We are going to cut this all down into two foot lengths. Stand by. All right, kids and kittens, here we go cutting the metal. Definitely ears and eyes for this. Eight more to go. You know, these you can cut with an angle grinder, you can cut with a hacksaw, um, you could cut with a pipe cutter. Um, and I'm cutting a lot of materials because I'm making the largest verm bin, the 96. But the smaller ones, particularly the 24, works just as well. It takes a lot less materials. Now, normally, ends like this, you'd be, uh, you know, taking the grinder to and flattening those out. And I, I may do that a bit, but I may just pound them flat with a hammer because they are just going to sit inside their little pockets and then be covered by the plywood at the front and back. So these are completely not exposed. No need to get too worried about cosmetics. It's more just a safe handling bit. That said, uh, now that uh, Charlie Chopsaw has been converted back over into uh, wood murdering mode, we are going to cut ourselves legs out of 2x4s. <laughs> And sorry for the wind noise. Colorado, what can you do? So we're looking at one wall. That'll actually be the front wall. You can see the bottom where the conduit false bottom is going to go through those holes. There's the top edge and of course two sides. So starting to look a little bit like a verm bin. Let me knock together uh, a second one of these and we'll be even a little bit closer. Stand by. When doing these legs, or the, uh, sorry, the side rails, that are going to go from the front to the rear. Obviously you can't just face screw them. So you do have to drill a pilot at a bit of an angle here. You start in square for just a bit, then lift it and then drill down. Then you've got your pilot. They go in pretty easily from there. Shazam. All right. Well, sorry for the reverse angle. I had to get into the <laughs> garage to get out of the sun. So you could see it. So we're looking, we're looking at the top. Now I basically just need to get the matching rear part 
and do the same, you know, toe screw in these cross pieces. Then it will take its final shape. So hang on a moment. And shazam, we got a worm bin. So this is what it looks like assembled. Now obviously we've got to do sheathing. We got the walls to put on the outsides. But you can kind of see here, I've put in a, a few bars of the conduit just so you can see how the false bottom is going to run across the entire thing when assembled. And then just hinges and a lid and what have you. But I think it's helpful, it certainly was for me, to see just the skeleton before it gets fully assembled. So that's what the Vermbin 96 looks like. So the 48 of course would be half as long and the 24 a quarter as long. Starting to look like something real. Boy, it is smoking hot out today, so I'm trying to get through this. Special thanks to Mrs. Wormworks for reminding me to eat some lunch and drink some water. Ay de me. True confessions time. All right, well, I, <laughs> I had hoped and tried to, to put on the bottom rails, but <laughs> the lumber that I used was just so crooked, such a, had such a, a twist to it along its length that even though I could affix it by screwing on levers and wrenching it down and whatnot, the whole frame was so out of true by the torque of those two boards, even with them uh, put on so as to cancel each other, that, that it was unusable. So I've, I've, I've taken those off. I'm just gonna figure out a way to affix the casters now. So I, I have put in the um, center stabilizers. Now I'm going to uh, put in the conduit and clad it up and put the casters on. Well, did have to just tap in a couple of them with the, uh, with the hammer, but otherwise all the holes lined up really well. You can see that in a fit of peak over my uh, frustration <laughs> with the whole torqued lumber bit, I uh, crossed down some um, pressure treated four x four material to make the uh, legs large enough for my heavy duty casters. Um, and that won't interfere with the harvesting rake. So that's where we are. Okay, so we've got the board clamped in place, more or less. Uh, now we just got to... Uh... Burn some screws in. Just a tip for the educators out there, as this plywood typically comes with one finished side, one handsome side, and one crummy side. So if you're going to be having people poke around in your bins, don't forget to put the uh, good looking side facing out on the front and facing in on the back, <laughs> just because your, your viewers are always going to be on one side or to other, right? All right, so now we just have to cut down the, uh, the end pieces. Now, if you get your lumber at a big box store, I prefer Lowe's, they will cut these for you. So these come as big sheets of four foot by eight foot. I've got a trailer that can accommodate that, but they have this cool cutter. They just lean it up there and you say, here, here are the cuts you need. The dimensions are all in your plans. So I've had these uh, ripped down lengthwise there so now I just have two cuts to make in all of this sheeting to be able to put the ends on the verm bin. <laughs> One done. One to go. Well, we've got it all clad and got the lid cross cut down. So there's going to be two separate lids. Now all we need to do is just get some hinges on here. I'm going to use some pretty robust hinges. There will be a pair of hinges for each lid so that each half of the bin can be opened and operated independently if I need to. All right, folks, <laughs> we're getting close and I'm getting excited. Got the lid on. With this thin plywood, and indeed with the thicker ones, such as I built my 48 out of, when you're doing the hinges, you'll see that the screws protrude through a little bit if you use a reasonably robust screw. Not to worry, I just pierce that all the way through, use longer screws to drive them into the frame. But for this bit for the uh, roof, what I'm gonna do is just use the angle grinder to cut down those, uh, the protruding ends of those screws, but let them bite all the way in so that we have a good strong hinge joint.
shiny. All right, friends. That is a Verm Bin 96. <laughs> Could still use some handles. I haven't decided yet whether to stain it or not, but you know, we've got two good quality door hinges on the back. Lid lifts up, ground those flat. And inside each half, we have eight square feet of processing power for a total of 16 square feet of surface area for vermicomposting. As I mentioned earlier, I do have some foam board. So this is gonna be an outdoor system. Inside these gaps, the stud gaps, is gonna be that insulating foam board. So that'll be the next step. A Verm Bin 96 rolled right through the doorway into her future home. She's gonna live and operate against that wall when it's all said and done. But, yeah, got it all insulated. Got it all cleaned up so there's no styrofoam contact. Holy cow, that was a pretty great day. The Verm Bin is just an amazing system for a couple hundred bucks. I'll have to look and see what, what the total damage was. Fewer than $300, certainly. You know, you can make this a 16 square foot system, um, an eight or a four square foot system, and that is a fifth, a tenth the cost of commercial systems of, of similar size and processing ability. So for somebody with just a little bit of willingness to, to do some sawdust therapy, these are, these are just amazing systems and I, I couldn't be more excited to get this one rolling. One additional change that I've made that you'll see between uh, this build and the blueprints is that I have not included the uh, return air grill for ventilation in the lids. I've done that deliberately. The wood system breathes really well for me. I live in an extremely arid climate. So I have found in operating my 48 that I don't really need the additional ventilation. I have the option of adding them later. I really don't think I'm gonna need the return air grill. I typically will run a cover of a bubble wrap or something on the surface. That's just to allow the worms to work all the way up to the surface and to help retain some of that moisture. Uh, so I don't, I don't believe I'm gonna add a, uh, a ventilation grill or additional soffits um, in this bin. And then I dare say, a well-earned pint watching the sunset. And now we've added the proceeds of both of my Vermi bag systems, the Mini Mammoth and Vermi Bag Max. These are largely finished castings. Both of those bags were ready to harvest. I sort of timed them this way. So yeah, oodles of mature castings. There is, yeah, lots of worms in here, as you can see. Plenty of castings as well. On top of here, I'm gonna start putting some pre-compost and then some bedding. And that will be, that will be the uh, biological starter for kicking off the worm bin. Thanks a lot for staying with us and compost on friends. This is Ben with Lions Wormworks.